Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another weekly wrap up where I had another pretty like bomb and week this week. I read 18 books. Um, a lot of them actually were quite shorter um, because I was um, getting some books read for a recommendation video which it's always kind of funny to do these like wrap ups because I'm basically going to talk about all the books that are going to be in that recommendation video. Not all of them but a good amount um, because I was in a mood. I was in a particular mood but that's the thing with being a creator who does weekly wrap-ups is like not everyone who watches your videos watches every video right um, otherwise I'd have 10,000 views on every video and we know that that doesn't happen so yeah I don't know what I'm saying point being it's a thing yes I did get my hair re-dyed this is like fresh I haven't even like washed it again since I did it so I you know it looks brighter and more awesome than it usually does. Also still getting used to the new ring light, which I absolutely love it. Honestly, it, it makes my life a lot easier, but I don't, I still don't have a great way to like backlight myself. So, but it's okay. You know, I've been doing this a long time, I'm just going through creator stretches. Um, but anyway, cause it is like light out, but it's that two light things. We're using the ring light and we're sitting in front of my historical shelves, which I don't always sit in front of. These are actually not all of my historical shelves. Um, I have Outlander way up top and Harry Potter way up top. And then I have three more shelves in my bedroom that are all historical romances because I have, I mean, I have about 700 of them is a thing. Anyway, what am I talking about? Let's go ahead and dive in. First thing we got to start with, we have a new channel member. Thank you, Robin, for joining the channel. She joined at a romantic renegade. Robin, thank you so much for supporting the channel. As my channel memberships grow, it's amazing to me. Um, we now have some people who've been a channel member for a whole year, which is amazing. I saw the first person's icon who's been here for a year change, and I was like, wow, my little family is growing up so much. So yeah, we have 18 books to talk about. Um, I think it won't be as bad as I think it is because last week I had 23 to talk about and we did it in a in a sort of timely manner. So let us get started with what I've been reading. I have a few to actually show off. So this is fun. Um, the first one that I finished was actually Seduction of a Highland Lass by Maya Banks. That is the downside of the ring light. It's a little shiny. This is the second book in the McCabe Brothers trilogy. Okay, this one is about... Alaric McCabe, who's supposed to marry Riona McDonald, who we knew about from the first one. We actually did the first book in this series for Rake Appreciation Society uh, this month, which is on Crystal's channel, if you want to check it out, where we talked about it. Um, and then in this one, we have Keely McDonald, who runs across our, well, runs across our hero when he has been um, attacked. Him and his men have been attacked when he was on his way to kind of like speak with Riona. They were going to set up when the wedding was supposed to happen and all this stuff. And he gets attacked. Only he survives. And his horse actually carries him to the door of Keeley. And Keeley um, is an outcast member of the McDonald clan. She's actually used to be Riona's best friend, but then some things happened and now she's not. So she is healing Alric, trying to help him. She does have healing power, like healing powers. She has healer skills and that's kind of how she makes sort of a living on the side because even though she's been outcast from McDonald's, sometimes they'll still come to her. Um, and then when Ewan comes looking for his brother, they stumble across the cabin where she's taking care of him and um, Ewan is our hero from the first book and his wife is going to have a baby soon. And so he's like, well, you're going to come back and nurse Alric and you're going to stay here for my baby to be born. And she's like, no, I'm not. And he's like, yes, you are. And he basically kind of kidnaps her. And then this book is a relationship between Keely and Alric knowing that he's supposed to marry her best friend, Riona. Now I was very hesitant going into this book because very quickly it became clear that this was maybe a mistress trope or it was going to be set up um to you know be like we know we have a finite time to be together but for some reason i was still very compelled the whole way through and there was just something about the way that maya hugh maya banks had this work for me where i wasn't annoyed with her for for sleeping with him and i wasn't mad at him for trying to have this 
something for himself before he's supposed to do his duty to marry Riona. Now, there's nothing wrong with Riona. In fact, Riona is going to be our heroine in the third book. So she will get her HEA. But I don't know. There was just something about the way that they decided to take joy while they could find it. And they both agree to that. Like it's not something where one of them is expecting more than they're going to get. So there's a certain level of like heartbreak that is built into that. Also a reason why this book kept my interest is that Maya Banks definitely brought out a little bit of her like BDSM love because she also writes contemporary BDSM and stuff like that. Because Alaric uses some rope in some pretty interesting ways. And the sex between these two, their chemistry, their passion is very good. So this book was four stars for me because it's still not going to be a trope that I can really get behind, but I did still have a pretty good time with it. So sorry, it's shiny. I gave this one four stars. Definitely wasn't bad by any means. Then another one that I finished is Seven Years to Sin by Sylvia Day. This is another author who um, writes contemporary romance, but this is actually a historical. So I've read the Bared to You series, the Cross series, um, and this supposedly is the book that inspired Sylvia Day to write Bared to You. I don't really see the connection. That's the thing. Maybe people who are bigger fans of Sylvia Day than I am because I came to Baird to You pretty late. You know, I only read it last year. I read that series. So, you know, it's not really like I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, but this was very interesting. This one is about Shucks. I think I forgot her, her their names in this. And of course, it doesn't say it on the back. But our hero, okay, our hero is Alistair, and he's actually kind of been a prostitute, pros, prostitute, a prostitute and escort for the last few years. Um, he kind of like fell into it and then like didn't hate it, and so he's done that. And then our heroine, I think her name is Jessica. Is it Jessica? Yeah. She is a recent widow, and they actually knew each other briefly before she married her husband, who was a good husband. He was very sweet. Um, they had a gr good sex like that, a great life together, and he died. And But before she married him, she actually caught Alistair in the garden with one of his clients, which she didn't know was his client at the time. And he they were having sex and she like couldn't look away and like watch this happen. But then she married her husband and everything happened. And now, because Alistair is actually like a friend of the family, um, I think he's like a friend of her brother-in-law. Um, either way, he's escorting her on a ship from one place to the other. And they end up agreeing to have a liaison when while they're on the ship. But also Alistair is kind of playing for keeps because he's always wanted her and now he's ready to go for it. So I gave this book three and a half stars. I was, well, I guess it says I gave it four stars, but upon reflect, it's more of a three and a half star for me. The reason why it kind of pulled up for me, number one, we have two stories that are happening. There's also her sister. There was a miscarriage of the sister, like the sister has a miscarriage, randomly thrown in at the end for no reason. No attention is really paid to it. And that really is a trigger for me to have loss of a child just thrown in seemingly for no reason offhanded and then there's no consequences or like something to go with it and so that kind of pissed me off right at the end of this book also Alistair from the beginning is playing for keeps that he wants to be with Jess and then once they are together he's convinced her to be with him now he's worried that she'll be ashamed that he was a prostitute before and I was like mm, don't you think you would have thought about that at the beginning when you chose to pursue this widow so it just got weird. It was very intriguing. There are more books of hers that are also historical. I don't know if I'll read them, but I was glad to try this because I wanted to give one of her historicals a try in the same way that like I like Maya Banks historicals. So I tried it. It was okay. Then I read Alaska Wild by Helena Newberry and so began me reading more survival romances. Okay. I read a lot of those this week. I also read a couple last week but I read even more this week. So this is by Helena Newberry. This is also actually a new release. I believe this is on KU. And our heroine is an FBI agent and she is searching down a fugitive 
and then we this is confusing we have two fugitives we have a guy who's like a white collar criminal he did like ponzi scheme he lost people a lot of money he's on the run for that and he's being picked up by u.s marshals to be brought back for to face consequences and then we have our hero who is on the run he skipped out on his court martial he was a soldier who had actually been taken prisoner for a time but he's accused of murdering a family that like his unit was supposed to be protecting he was the only one standing they wanted to blame him for this he's been on the run and living on his own both of these people both of these criminals for different reasons get captured our heroine who had been looking for i think she was looking for someone else she ends up hitching a ride on the plane that the marshals are bringing these two people back okay i believe that's a setup it's a confusing it's not as confusing when you're reading it their plane ends up being purposely crashed okay because the rich criminal he has paid off the u.s marshals and that's part of the reason why they tried to keep her from getting on the plane because they didn't want there to be another casualty but they have enough parachutes for the two marshals and the prisoner to get away so they shoot the pilot and then they bail out of the plane and so our heroine our soldier slash convict man and dead pilot and so they crash land this plane it, actually not too far from where our hero lives because they hadn't made it that far away but now they are trapped and not only that our villains who have landed they realize that they're not dead through drones apparently like he just has a drone apparently so yeah so we did this then um this had a huge case of insta love for me okay 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 like the whole ordeal of this story only takes about like 72 hours like it is not super long and at the end of the second day not only is our heroine having loving feelings for him she says i think i'm falling in love with you that doesn't work for me i was having a conversation with my big sis because i've read insta lust slash insta love that has worked for me before but it's always like an internal thing like it's like the person can think like wow i have really strong feelings for this person or maybe they're not even able to articulate that they already are in love with someone but like we can feel it because i do believe in love at first sight or insta connection i have people in my life who have been married after knowing each other for three weeks and have been married for 30 years like i believe in it but i also don't quite believe in a book when an author legit has the person say i think i'm in love with you it'd be one thing if it was conveyed through their actions and how protective they feel that there's a feeling happening but it just got way too much like i would die for you within 72 hours for me and then there was almost too much action going on like the thing i love about survival romances is like the forced proximity living off the land having to work together i just really love that um so it's almost like this book was a little bit like the survival instincts books by adriana anders but not as well executed and a little bit bananas like there are a lot of aspects about that book that remind me of uncharted which i happen to have by me because i'm going to be filming a video with uncharted later today like there are aspects about it that absolutely remind me of this and so i don't know if that's what had inspired this author which is fine you can be inspired by it but it was bad so i gave it three stars let's move on i have many other books to talk about can't do this all right so then i read phase captive and i'm gonna bunch all these together because i read phase captive on its own and then I went ahead and bought the bundle that had one through four with it but i read them at like different times but we're going to talk about them all together because i gave phase captive four stars and i gave two three and four three and a half stars so we're, we're kind of in this place so phase captive was actually recommended to me by a viewer it was a viewer recommendation that i had on my list for october it was only like 140 pages um and here comes my issue which i know i've harped on this so many times and i'm sorry if for some reason you're an author watching this who is like yeah that's just how i have to write my books like i'm sorry it doesn't work for me to break it up into such small pieces like if you write in chunks like that can you wait till it's all one book because one through four they're literally four parts of one book that were all released individually 
And then there is a second part that's going to be about a different couple that's books five, six, seven, and eight that are also all broken up into these tiny parts. There's no real rhyme or reason why they end where they end. There's no rise or fall in the arc. They just boom, 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 stopped at these places. And it was very jarring. Um, but what is this about? This is about a heroine who she gets switched with her changeling. Um, I know that's a weird thing. So it starts in like modern times. We have this woman, she goes to a party with her friend and she gets switched with a changeling. So someone who looks exactly like her comes from Faye, takes her, she gets thrown into Faye. Normally you don't change with a changeling so late in life or so we find out. She ends up in the prison of one of the Faye queens and in the dungeon, blah, blah, blah. She's going to be used as a slave. So she gets brought up to serve. And there we have our hero in this who is the winter prince king and he's there for like a diplomatic meeting and he sees her instantly knows she's his mate and then goes about rescuing her and taking her with him um so it's a faded mate thing but also yeah she's the phase captive because he takes her but it's immediately like you are my queen you're gonna be queen of the winter you're amazing also we want to find out like why she was changed at such a late time she does have some magical abilities, so maybe she is part Faye herself. Um, and yeah, so we're with these group of people. And there was a lot of characters introduced, there was a lot of stuff going on, and not enough time to do it. Just to put in perspective, all four of the books, if you get the bind up with all four of them, it's only 338 pages. So that tells you how small each part is, and it just didn't end up being very satisfying for me. So. Although I am very intrigued by the couple that is going to be in books five through eight, I don't know if I can go through what I went through with these four. So my average rating for all four of them probably is that 3.5 now that I know how it wrapped up and everything. So also the, am the, um, when I, the amount of cock blocking by the heroine for herself that happens in part one, two, and half of part three had me ready to throw my Kindle at the wall. Like, this man is your mate. He will do everything for you. He is enamored of her. And every time it gets hot and heavy, she's like, no, 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 not yet, no. And I was like, I've never so much wanted someone to ignore someone's no, okay? But then again, I like some dubious consent, so I'm projecting. But I had lady blue balls by the time something happened. Okay. All right. Moving along. Then I read Big Bad Wolf by Jenica Snow. So my first Jenica Snow that I read was actually uh, earlier this month or was it last month? I think it was last month, but it was one of the um, Underworld Kings because I believe Jenica Snow was actually like the brains behind this kind of and was the one who like invited all the authors into it, I think. And I read Cold Hearted Bastard by her. Loved it. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing. And... I wanted to try some of her other stuff. So unbeknownst to me, my bestie Jessen had also just read Big Bad Wolf as well. So Big Bad Wolf is like novella length. It is a faded mate. This woman is um, traveling Europe and she goes through Romania. She comes across um, this place that she's staying at is next to this big estate where these two wolf brothers live. Um, they are over 300 years old. One of them, who we'll talk about later, he's going a little bit crazy um, because he hasn't found his mate in so long. Um, but our heroine in, or hero in this one comes across the scent of his mate and he goes about courting her. So he does. He, he courts her. He explains what they are to each other. Things move quickly. It's a novella length. But I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. We will come back to this series later. Very sexy. And also, I love when this happens. This is one where our hero for 300 plus years has stayed a virgin for his mate because he knows that no other sexual experience that he ever has will compare to his mate and he doesn't want anyone in between them when it finally happens. So even though his sweet human mate is like 25 years old, he remained chaste for 300 plus years for his woman. Oh, when I tell you that that shit does it for me, it does it for me. Moving along. Then I read Highland Hellion by Mary Wine. This book is book three in the Highland Wedding series. I read book one and two, man, 
either at the beginning of this year or last year. Really enjoyed them. They're fun, great. Anthony Ferguson is the one who does the narration for these and I really liked it. I was very intrigued to do this one. So this is Catherine Carew who we met in book two. At 14 years old she was going to be forced to marry the hero of that book and instead of marrying her he rescues her from the Duke of Moreland. These take place during I believe it, let me see when it is. I think it's the Regency of uh, Edward, like the, the son of King Henry VIII, because I think he's the like regent at the time. I can't remember, but either way, the Duke of Moreland is the one who's trying to force this stuff to happen. And so she's been living with, um, who has she been living with? I don't know. She's been living with our with our good people <laughs> for the last like uh how many years of her life she was trained with the men in a lot of ways and so she dresses like a man and acts like a man in a lot of ways to she knows how to protect herself she knows how to hunt she knows how to do a lot of things um and actually our hero who is supposed to marry her is kind of like an older brother to her in a lot of ways now and then Rolf mctavish is a laird and he can't believe that Kate is dressed as a boy. Of course, he figures it out pretty quickly. And he actually kidnaps her to kind of teach her a lesson that like, you may be dressed like a boy, but if a man ever got his hands on you, something bad could really happen. But then it ends up escalating and his father wants to sell her for ransom and all these things. And anyway, they end up tangled up and everything. So this was a pretty good time. I listened to this one on, it's on any play. I gave it four stars. I love the Scottish stuff. I love the court intrigue that happens in these and it's a pretty quick read. So I gave this one four stars. Then I did a little reread because I got in my Target order where I think it was like two weeks ago, Target had their sale where it's buy two, get one free for their books and movies and stuff. And so they actually have self-pub books if you will look online and put it in order. So it's very hard to search. You kind of have to know the authors that you're looking for, but they have, there's so many amazing books that were in that haul. But I was really in the mood to kind of have like a palette cleanser. Um, and this is one of the books that I really, really loved when I read it. So I actually reread Pucked Love, which is like book six in the Pucked series, but it's one of the shorter ones. It actually has um, a little bit of like kinky stuff in it. Although upon the reread, this was not as kinky as I remember it being. There are a lot of piercings involved, which is cool. Like our heroine has a hood piercing and like pierced nipples and they do enjoy some like kinky play together. And this book starts out with, um, our heroine Charlene has kind of made herself an appetizer for our hero by um, putting out all the fun toys that they have and kneeling naked in his house. Um, she doesn't normally do this. Normally they plan things ahead of time, but she wanted to surprise him. And he happens to have brought his team over to hang out. And so they walk into the house and their kinky secrets just are out there for everyone to see. Um, and this is kind of how they deal with it. So I really had a great time rereading this. I actually ended up giving it five stars because this book, this hero, I would almost call him like neurodivergent in a way. Like he's not like a sociopath, but I would, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. But the way that he thinks about things and the way that he will react to try to make sure she has everything she needs and the way that he needs to kind of be told certain things. I don't know. It's really hard to describe. If you read the book, you maybe know what I mean, but I actually gave this book five stars. Last time I read it, I gave it four stars. This time I gave it five stars. I just really enjoyed revisiting this couple and it was a great reread for me. So I gave this one five stars. All right, then I read This Love Hurts by W. Winters or Willow Winters. This um, trilogy by her, so this is this is the first one in a trilogy. These ones are actually on any play. There aren't a lot of Willow Winters books on any play, but this happened to be a series of hers I've been wanting to try. So I haven't read many Willow Winters at all. I've read those two paranormal ones I read last week. I've read her new office romance, but otherwise I hadn't actually read any of hers. I've bought a lot of them over time that are like sitting on my Kindle, but I've never actually read them. And so when 
on one of her TikToks, she said that this was a love triangle between a serial killer, an FBI agent, and a lawyer. I was very interested. Um, the lawyer and the FBI agent, they've kind of had an off again, on again, like friends with benefits relationship. Um, and over the years, they have actually been chasing this serial killer and haven't had any luck getting him. And now he's become obsessed with our heroine as well and is stalking her. And that's really as far as we got in this. Um, the audiobooks are pretty short. Like, they're only four and a half hour audiobooks. So listening on 1.75 speed, it was only like two and a half hour listen. But this definitely was not a complete story. There wasn't even any spice in this one at all which must be saved for a later book um definitely not what i'm used to from willow windows because hers are usually pretty spicy right away um i don't know what i was feeling with it i gave it three and a half stars i know part of that is like you definitely should get the bind up of these or like binge them all together because it was definitely not like you know it's only a third of the beginning of a story so something important to keep in mind then I read a wonderful book. I, oh, I love this. I read Burn For Me by Sarah Kate. I can't remember where I saw this one. I think someone posted it in one of the discords that I'm a part of, but this was so good. I've actually read some Sarah Kate before. She has a series that is some taboo age gaps, and this is also a taboo age gap. So our hero is 18 years old. He's a college student. Our heroine is 32 years old and she is a professor, a journalism professor. Now, so that's kind of, that's the, the age range. There's a 14 year age gap. Also, our hero hates our heroine for a not justified, but also good reason. She, when she was a journalism student back uh, eight years ago, she uncovered that our hero's dad was entrenched in a human sex trafficking ring. And she was one of the reporters, like journalists responsible for bringing him down. So after he went to prison, um, his wife slash our hero's mom overdosed on pills and our hero had to go live with his uncle who was abusive and um, got him involved in a lot of pretty bad things. Now he plays rugby and he has a scholarship to this school and the first day of his journalism class he realizes that the teacher is the woman who ruined his life. He has a lot of anger built up and nowhere to put it and so he thrusts it on to our heroine and he decides to fuck with her. What I loved about this is that getting the hero's POV in this, this isn't really an overly planned thing. This isn't like he's been planning revenge all this time. He stumbles across her. She's his teacher. He has all these feelings he's trying to give, get out, and he decides to fuck with her. And so he does. He gets her in a few situations that are compromising, gets some evidence of that, and decides to hold it over her head. Now our heroine, she definitely has options that she could make this stop, okay? So there are some dubious and non-consensual things that happen in the beginning of this book, but it also becomes clear from our heroine's POV that not only does she feel guilty about ruining his life, even though she does not feel guilty about getting his dad in prison because he deserved it, she does feel guilty that this boy suffered because of what happened, you know? So she kind of protests, but not really, because again, she is really turned on by the situations they find themselves in and by what he does to her. But she also feels guilty and kind of wants to let him do it. I gave this book five stars. I really, really loved this. I love that our hero wasn't perfectly thought out, wasn't a complete psycho. Like he's not really a psychopath or a sociopath. Okay. He, he doesn't have those. And in fact, like you'd see, you'll see when you read it, like it's more a thing of just like has so much anger and hurt and abuse like built up. And then there's this woman he can take it out on, but he's not very well organized or planned and he's pretty sloppy. And if she didn't want what was happening on some degree, it wouldn't be happening. So I loved this book. 
I was really addicted to it. I read it so fast. Um, and yeah, I gave it five stars. Then I read Hooking Up by Helena Hunting because after I reread Pucked Love, I remember that, oh yeah, I have a series by Helena Hunting that I haven't finished yet. I've read the first book in this series, Shacking Up, but I hadn't read the other ones. Um, and so I got them on Libby and I'm listening to them. So Hooking Up is our heroine was best friends with the heroine from the first book and she is supposed to be getting married and so the beginning of this book is her on her wedding day her hu her husband who she's already married like they've been married and they're at the reception he gets a blow job from a lady in the back and everyone hears it and knows what happened so she decides to take the honeymoon on her own and go to Bora Bora. Well, our hero in this one is actually cousins with who was going to, who was her husband. And he is the brother of the hero from the first one. And he actually is going to the same place as her because he actually owns the hotel. It's a family thing. So like the hotel where her honeymoon was going to happen, the resort is also the one that like belongs to the family. And so they end up on the plane together and then they end up deciding through things to hook up on her honeymoon. Um, this is complicated by the fact that our hero is from a wealthy family who doesn't like the fact that she is going to get this marriage annulled, this marriage that lasted all of six hours. And he wants to coerce her into staying married to him. And he says that it wasn't really sex that I was having with other people. I was just getting blowjobs. I didn't kiss them or anything. You're a society wife now. You just have to be used to this. It's infuriating as it sounds. It's infuriating as it sounds. Um, yeah, so that's the setup. It was all right. I gave this four stars. Didn't hate it. It was a quick read. Um, it was very sexy. Um, our heroine wasn't super great to our hero about how things worked out. Like there didn't need to be a third act conflict the way that it went down. Like there was enough conflict happening with the husband trying to force her to stay married and like between their families and stuff. I didn't also need our heroine to have a crisis with the hero. Like it didn't need to happen, but it was okay. It was four stars. All right. Then we begin the Claire Kent binge that I went on and it was great. And this is also who you're going to hear about in my survival romance rec video because I read Last Light by Claire Kent. Now, I had heard of Claire Kent before. We'll talk about that when I get to the next book that I read by her. But this one is an apocalypse book. Um, there has been a, uh, there was an asteroid that like hit Earth in Europe and it basically like just fucked the whole planet over. Um, and it made this like cloud of smoke that like took out a lot of people. It took out the young and the old. Um, and at the beginning of this book, we have our heroine who she had stayed back in their town. So like their whole town was like migrating to Fort Knox, which had like, it was going to be safer. And she stayed behind because her grandma was dying from the smoke and was going to die soon. And she stayed with her until she died. And when she is headed out of town, she runs into our hero, whose name is Travis. I remember his name. Can't remember the heroine's name, but I remember his name, who was like the town mechanic. He's really gruff looking. He's all hairy, um, tough guy. And he'd actually had fixed her like family vehicle before. And he, they run into each other. She pulls a gun on him and she's like, no, I'm going at it alone. He's like, we can go together because he had also stayed behind because his daughter was dying and his ex-wife had went with you know, only one parent needed to stay behind to bury their daughter and the mother kind of couldn't handle it. And not in a mean way, like, honestly, this was actually a really interesting look at like an ex couple because he does not like pissed that this happened, but either way, he wants to make it to his ex wife and with the family or with the town as well. So he's like, let's travel together. And she's like, no, I can't trust men these days, which is totally fair. So our heroine, she holds a gun on him and then takes off. She gets a little ways down the road. She runs into someone who is dying and he has a message for her to take to Fort Knox about this. They're called droves, 
which aren't like zombies or anything, but they're packs of like biker people slash bad people. I'm saying bikers because they're usually on motorcycles um, who will go raping, robbing, and murdering people. And they've made these huge packs that stay on the main highways and take people out. And they were on their way to Fort Knox. And so this this man who's been who's dying it says you need to get to Fort Knox to warn them to keep them safe and when she's there some other people come upon her and are gonna you know try to assault her and Travis has caught up to her and he helps her kill the men and then he said now will you trust me let's travel together so our two peeps from the same town who didn't really know each other at all are now traveling together and this is their romance now when I tell you that this is a worshipful relationship that our hero is gruff and grumpy and he's Daryl Dixon he's Daryl Dixon guys without without the bow okay this is what I came to when I finished this book and I even made I even made an Instagram story about it because I did not realize I was in the middle of of Daryl Dixon and Beth fan fiction because that's not what the author called it so like I, this isn't official I was very happy because I don't watch Walking Dead anymore because all my favorite people died but I loved in season four is it season four where Beth and Daryl were stuck together for a little while I really just love their interactions and I ship it okay I ship it and for me that's what this was he was grumpy and gruff and you know, dirty. Like, honestly, I really loved how Claire Kent set up the atmosphere of this, that like, it's gross. Like, they're smelly, but how she actually likes his like, natural manly scent and, and how that's how she knows she's in a safe place. And it's about them trying to get to Fort Knox. And our hero, you know, eventually this turns like, they're like, well, let's, let's be sleeping together while we do this, let's be sleeping together. And our hero, you know, never wants to do anything our heroine doesn't want because he does not want to be seen as those, you know, men that we've passed along the way. He is always looking for enthusiastic consent from her. And he is so worshipful of this woman that he feels is a gift to him. And this is all in the heroine's POV, but you can pick it up as a reader. And I loved this book. And it spurred me on to keep reading survival romances and like end of the world shit because I loved it. I loved it. Okay. I gave this five stars, obviously. Then I read Haven by Claire Kent, which is her series that she is going to make now that is a spinoff from Last Light. Um, and this one is about these two people who are basically running a survivor town. Um, they're young adults, like they were a part of this, like her parents were like foster parents kind of. And one of the like foster kids is a guy who he's like 25 now, she's 20. And they've been keeping these like young people safe and in this town basically. And this is a novella about them where they've been hooking up for a while now, but they never talk about it during the day. They will just have sex at night and not talk about it during the day. And this is kind of about when their feelings are kind of bubbling up and everything. And as well as trying to survive. And we may or may not run into some people we met in the first book and everything. So anyway, well, technically this is the first book. She actually has another one planned and it's gonna be a series of novellas that take place in the same world as Last Light. There we go. So then I continued with my Claire Kent, like I said, and I read Hold. Okay, so this is the one that I'd heard of before and I actually had on, I'd had it on my Kindle quite a while ago and I never got around to it. So like I returned it because it's KU. This is the first book in the Hold series, which is like space. It takes place in space, but each book takes place on a different planet. So in this first book, it is a prison planet okay our heroine who has Kim she did a minor offense and she gets thrown into the hold which is this prison planet there's different prisons there specifically this one called the hold and when our heroine is being dropped off 
the guard who's dropping her off says, you need to find the strongest, most powerful man, and you need to offer him your body in favor of protection. He's like, that is the only way you're going to live. Otherwise, you will just get passed around until you die. That's what happens to the women here because there is no segregation between the women and the men. So she gets dropped off and she sees this one man who looks very tough and gruff and he's off by himself. And then there's this very charismatic man who kind of has like a harem of women. He can support a lot of them. And then there's all these different ones and they're all making plays for her. She's very beautiful. But then our gruff, tough man, Kane, he comes in and is like, she's mine. And he's the toughest. So now she's with him and she offers her body to him. And it's very interesting. Like, oh my God, this book was, it like blew my mind a lot. Okay. Um, and he may or may not have an escape plan. And by may or may not, I mean, he does because our second book is called release. And this is about, um, one of the other prisoners that helps them escape. So spoiler get away from the prison and his name is Hall as in H-A-L-L -L, and he's on a different he ends up on a different planet he runs this like smuggling group with his friend which is dangerous that's how he got thrown in the hole to begin with and he ends up meeting this woman and they fall in love and she's not supposed to marry anybody but it works out didn't love this one okay didn't love this one gave this one three stars it didn't have the same atmosphere as the first one that I loved so much and it just like it wasn't vibing for me. I skimmed a lot in this one. But then I read the third one, which is called Fall. And this one was a caveman romance. Okay, so the business partner of the hero from the last one, see how they connect? She ends up getting in trouble and she gets thrown onto a prehistoric planet. Okay, it's a prehistoric planet. There are dinosaurs and cavemen. And similarly to our heroine, in the prison book, she needs to find the strongest caveman and ask him to be her mate in exchange for safety and survival. And that's what she does. And it, this was so interesting. So I gave this one four stars as well. I was not expecting that. There's only one more book in this series and I was saving it because I don't want to be done with it. But I was just, I'm very fascinated with Claire Kent and where her brain goes. So I enjoyed that. All right, almost done here. Then I read Cherish by Katherine Anderson. I was not a big fan of this one. This was recommended to me by, you know, because I loved Annie's song. And so lots of people have been recommending other books by Katherine Anderson that they really like. And the ones they recommended the most is the Comanche Moon series, which I will be getting to. I promise we'll get there. But I read Cherish first because it was a standalone and it was um I was able to oh I read this one on Scribd I actually restarted my Scribd uh, account just so that I could listen to this one because I couldn't find it anywhere else um this is about a heroine who's a Quaker her group is traveling to Denver to set up their church there her family is actually carrying the money that they got from selling their land in like Pennsylvania or wherever and they get attacked by bandits who happen to find out about that they're carrying money and everyone gets murdered except for her and she's left for dead basically and then our hero whose name is race r-a-c-e he is a uh rancher he actually owns a ranch and he is traveling through and he stops at this massacre and he really wants to kind of honor them in some way. He wants to bury them if he can. And then he sees our heroine and realizes she's not dead and he thinks she's an angel. And so then the men who had murdered that all, they've been kind of watching to see who would show up. And so they come in and they're gonna kill them. Um, and his men show up. So anyway, they get rescued and she takes him back to, she takes her back to his ranch and he initially doesn't want to keep her with him because having a woman with all the men, he's like, this is gonna be a lot of work, but he starts falling for her and it's romance. This did not have the same, like, 
I just didn't feel for these characters the same way I did for Annie's song. It just didn't work for me. It wasn't as romantic. Like, honestly, Alex is a book boyfriend. He is so swoony and wonderful. And like Race, he was okay. He was very patient with her. Also, she's a Quaker. She has weird ideas about stuff. But this wasn't that sexy or romantic or anything. It was just a lot of flowery words about the prairie and about angels and about heaven and like all this stuff. And it got boring for me. So I gave this one three and a half stars. Then I read You Are Mine by Jenica Snow, which is the next book in that werewolf series that I was talking about. Um, I wanted to continue this series because the fourth book in the series comes out, I think, on Monday, and I really want to read it. Um, so this one is about the brother of the hero from the first one. So remember, he is the one who he's going kind of crazy because he hasn't found his mate. He's been waiting for his mate for so long. And now he doesn't have a brother to help him get through it because his brother has a mate. So he can't really relate to him the same way anymore. Um, now there are some other werewolves from other parts of the world that have come to celebrate his brother having found his mate. Um, and there are some Scottish wolves who've come to town. And there's this family where the Scottish werewolf king, he, his wife is actually a vampire. So all their children are half werewolf, half vampire. Um, usually one side picks which the strongest. So he actually has triplet boys, right? Scottish triplet boys. Okay. There's very much brave vibes in this, just so you know. And our heroine is the youngest daughter and neither really her vampire or wolf side has really come out as stronger yet. She has, her wolf is latent, so she doesn't transform. And then her vampire, like she's not as strong as other vampires either. So it's kind of just like me sitting in the middle here. Well, when our hero, uh, Luca walks into the party, he immediately smells his mate and she smells him and they're like, oh my God, we're mates. Well, her family is terrified of him because he's called like the mad wolf. They think he's too far gone, that he won't be able to be gentle or be a good mate or any of this stuff. And so they take her away. And that number one is breaks a lot of rules for them to take a mate away. She doesn't want to be taken, but like she loves her family. Her family is very loving. Like they are a wonderful family and they're terrified for her. Like her dad and her brothers, they're terrified. And so they take her back. Well, of course he follows. He would follow anywhere. And our heroine is really, she's brave. She's, she's scared to stick up to her parents, but she does sneak out of her castle to go and meet him. And it's pretty cool. So I gave this four stars because there wasn't really a great conflict. And this book, this was a full length book where the first one was a novella. This was full length. However, for the amount of story we had, this one actually could have been a novella too, which I don't say lately because I'd usually rather have more than less. But there's a lot of POVs that didn't need to be in this book. Like some of her brothers get POVs um, and other characters, I don't want to spoil who they are, get POVs that really didn't need to have them. So, mm. and then again, there's not really a conflict between them. It's really more like her family going to let her stay. Are they going to start a war? And then... I mean, not that you want them to start a war, but like this just, it didn't need to have as much as it was. However, it really gave me hunger not, like no other vibes in some great ways. And also everything was enthusiastic and consenting too. Like the sex scenes are wonderful. So this was really fun. If you're looking for, you know, a spooky read or like a paranormal read, this was a good one. And then the last one that I finished last night was Swan Lake by L.B. Alexander. This is a BDSM retelling of Swan Lake. This has severe, okay, look at my eyes. This has severe triggers for eating disorders and body image, okay? Um, the, the, the story of Swan Lake is being like, like our heroine's dark swan is her eating disorder. And it talks to her and it tells her horrible things, okay? Like to purge herself, to kill herself, to harm herself. It's, it's, it's a lot. Okay. I'm not triggered by those things. I thought it was very interesting, but this isn't a heroine who's like moved past it. Okay. She's working on it, but she's very much in this. What is amazing to me and what we don't fully get to see all of it yet in this book, because there is another one in the series that I haven't read yet is how BDSM and having a dominant who is in charge of her is going to help with this because 
she's able to hand over control and a lot of her decisions to her dom who cares for her and will help her be good to herself. So this is going to be a book that's BDSM as healing. We only just get to start seeing it in this one actually because they're just starting to come to their like terms of how they are going to live like a dynamic. But I was very impressed. So I gave this one four stars because there was a lot of it that wasn't super enjoyable, right? Because there is like, we see a lot of her throwing up and purging and not taking care of herself. And it, it's hard. You know, if you, if you struggle with that at all, I don't recommend this one. Um, if you have struggled with it before, I, you know, when we talk about a book triggering something that can mean many different things, but particularly the thought processes that are going on in here, I can see how they would actually trigger something for someone. Not just like, ooh, ooh, this was painful to relive or I don't want to read it. Like this could actually trigger something. So be good to yourself. Don't read this book if those things are harmful. Just stay out of it. So anyway, those are all the books that I read this week. It was another wonderful week. I expect the same thing coming up next. Um, I have some other videos to film, so I need to wrap this up and take care of my throat. So thank you so much for watching. I put up new videos three to four times a week. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel, like this video, comment, you know, which one of these books you want to read. And yeah, check me out down below. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.